Good evening. Welcome to the uh, January 13th, 2020 Troy City Council meeting. We are pleased and honored to have Wade Fleming to the invocation this evening. Wade, a former city council member and county commissioner. Please uh, rise for the invocation. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening with thankful hearts, Father, for so many blessings you've given us, Father, for this wonderful country that we live in, this wonderful state, county, and city, Father. And I just thank you for each person here tonight serving, for our mayor and our city council, for the time they give, Father. I just thank you for each city worker, each policeman, fireman, every worker, road worker, everyone, Lord. Just pray that you'll just protect them, watch over them, care for them, Father, when they're out doing their, their jobs, Father. And, Father, I just thank you for the citizens of Troy, Father, and just pray, Lord, that you would just help us to be accepting of one another, Father, and to love you and to put others before ourselves, Father. And Father, again, we just thank you for, for the opportunity, Father, we have to be here at this meeting tonight, Father, and just pray that the decisions that are made, Father, will be done with wisdom and discernment and order in a manner that's pleasing to you, and we'll give you the honor and the glory. These things we pray in your precious name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The January 13, 2020 Troy City Council meeting is now called to order. Uh, the roll call, Ms. Dixon. Mayor Baker? Here. Councilmember Abraham? Here. Councilmember Brooks? Here. Councilmember Erickson Galt? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Here. Councilmember Hoderick? Here. Councilmember Pennington? Here. <clears throat> All present. First on the agenda this evening is uh, certificates of recognition and special presentations. We have one this evening. It's a proclamation and recognition of Paula and Wade Fleming for many years of service to the city of Troy. So please join me at the podium. I'll meet you down there. So this is uh, bittersweet for us at Troy City Council and for the city of Troy as a whole. Um, we are obviously very thrilled to have you here this evening to be able to present this proclamation to you and to, to uh, get some hugs and <laughs> but also say our goodbyes at least for, for now. You're, uh, you're moving south and uh, you've been a big part of our community for a number of years. And when I got elected mayor, I talked to Cindy Stewart and I said, one of the first things I want to do is give a proclamation to Wade and Paula for all their years of service and their council members were very supportive and wanted to do the same. So if I may, I'm going to read this into the record and uh, celebrate you tonight. Thanks. So this is a proclamation and recognition of Paula and Wade Fleming for many years of service to the city of Troy. Whereas Paula and Wade Fleming moved to the city of Troy in January 1982. They have dedicated their years in this community by volunteering their time and talents for a variety of organizations, as well as the City of Troy and the Troy School District. And whereas Paula was elected to the Troy School Board in 2000, serving as board president from 2007 to 2008, as well as serving as vice president and secretary during her 20-year tenure as trustee. During her service to the Troy School District, Paula attended the Michigan Association of School Boards and became presidential certified. And whereas Wade ran for Troy City Council in 2005 and served nine years before being elected to serve as an Oakland County Commissioner for four years. And whereas even though Paula and Wade's political service kept them very busy, they found time to volunteer throughout the city of Troy and its community and beyond. Both have been very involved at Woodside Bible Church. Paula is a deaconess and Wade is an elder. They have co-led young married Bible study classes and were mentors counseling couples in preparation for marriage. And whereas Wade served as co-executive director of Friends of Troy Seniors and previously served over 10 years as chairman of the board of Promise Village Home for Children, Paula also was a volunteer for Promise Village, served on the advisory board of perspectives of Troy, and also on the Troy Foundation for Educational Excellence Board of Trustees. Both Paula and Wade were longtime members of the Troy Community Coalition, donating their time and talents for this very worthwhile organization. So now, therefore, be it resolved that the Troy City Council extends special recognition to Paula and Wade Fleming for their tireless service and dedication to our community. And be it further resolved that the Troy City Council and all of Troy's residents 
congratulate Paula and Wade Fleming as they leave the city of Troy and move to Rogers, Arkansas to assist their son Mark, wife Nikki, and family in opening a goldfish swim school franchise. There, there's your plug. There you go. <laughs> Anyone need swim lessons in Arkansas, you know where to go. Uh, we wish them continued success in all future endeavors as they enjoy this new adventure. This proclamation is presented this 13th day of January 2020, signed by myself and all members of City Council. We all truly wish you the best of luck and thank you for your years of service. I know the community feels the same and we, uh, like I said, it's bittersweet, but it's good to see you tonight. Thanks. I'll give you a hug. Yeah. Yeah. Mayor, do you mind if we come down? Oh, of course. Come oh, yeah. on down. <laughs> good idea. We better scoot over. We better Bye. scoot over. Yeah. 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 Mr. Mayor and, and Council, this is, was not necessary. It's very, very humbling for us. We were trying to go quietly, but there's people found out about it would not let us go quietly. But I have to tell you, when God brought us here in 1982, with these southern accents, we didn't know what to expect from <laughs> Troy. But this community embraced us, welcomed us. We had no idea what was in store. Certainly not a political career, mm -mm. you know, but it has really been a privilege to serve. And you know, we're humbled because we know how busy you are. And you've got a lot on your agenda tonight. You had a meeting before, you've got a meeting after this. So for you to take time to recognize us, it is truly an honor. And we certainly appreciate it, not expect it, but it's, it's certainly nice. And uh, we've just enjoyed serving. We feel so blessed to have lived in a community that, that's safe and uh, the people care about each other and people work really hard. And wonderful schools. <laughs> <laughs> you had to plug that. Gun. But we, we really do thank you so much. And... Uh, we have tried to do things to help children in the community and also now at our age, we're members of Friends of Troy Seniors. And I just have to tell you, anything you can ever do to help a child is never wasted. But our seniors are hurting as well. And it's a, a fast growing demographic. You know, you've heard the articles, the gray tsunami or the no hair tsunami, whatever. <laughs> but, our friends of Troy Seniors are using the community center and anything this council can do, and I, Mayor, I know you've been there, you've been to meetings, and some of you council people have been to meetings, but anything you can do to help them along, they're tremendous volunteers, they're working on a shoestring budget. I know everybody needs to have money to operate for city services and so forth, but our seniors really do a lot of volunteering. Anything you can do to help them out would be certainly appreciated. And, and just to echo everything that Wade has said, don't forget our kids. Don't forget all my kids. Um, and just to, I want to invite everybody to Northwest Arkansas. Ah, yeah. Just come on. There will be a, a room for you, and uh, we'll be glad to have you. God and bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
All right, Wayne, that's enough. No. <laughs> Southern time. <laughs> All right, that concludes certificates of recognition and special presentations. There are no carryover items this evening, uh, as well as no public hearings. We, uh, no one has signed up for public comment for items on the agenda. There are so no reply from city administration or council is necessary. Uh, there are no postponed items, so we move on to regular business. First up on the regular business menu is mayoral appointments. Uh, I have uh, three this evening. Uh, I'd like to appoint to the planning commission for the term expiring, actually all three terms expired uh, December 31st, 2022, uh, Mariana Paracas, Thomas Krent, and Sadiq Rahman. Support. Moved by the chair, supported by Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton, that we appoint Mariana Paracas, Thomas Krent, and Sadiq Rahman to the planning commission for the terms expiring December 31st, 2022. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon. Mayor Baker. Yes. Councilmember Abraham. Yes. Councilmember Brooks. Yes. Councilmember Erickson Galt. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton. Yes. Councilmember Hoderick. Yes. Councilmember Pennington. Yes. Motion carries. We thank them very much for their service. They have a, a meeting tomorrow night, so they'll be ready to go. But, uh, that concludes mayoral appointments this evening. We move on to city council appointments. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Troy City Council appoints to the Building Code Board of Appeals Matthew Deserman for the term expiring January 1st, 2025. Support. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton, supported by Councilmember Erickson Galt, that we appoint Matthew Deserman to the Building Board of Code Board of Appeals for the term that expires January 1st, 2025. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Councilmember Erickson Galt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Motion carries. We thank <laughs> Matthew for his service and commitment to our community as well. Uh, that concludes the uh, mayor and city council appointments this evening. We move on to I-2, board and committee nominations. We'll start with mayoral nominations. First, I'd like to nominate to the board of review, John Howard Adams for the term expiring January 31st, 2023. Support. Uh, moved by the chair, supported by council member Abraham that we nominate John Howard Adams to the board of review for the term expiring January 31st, 2023. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Councilmember Erickson Galt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, to the Downtown Development Authority, I'd like to nominate Timothy Blair, Martin Nolenberg, and Brian Miodzuski for the terms expiring September 30, 2023. Support. Moved by the chair, supported by Councilmember Abraham that we nominate to the Downtown Development Authority Timothy Blair, Martin Nolenberg, and Brian Miodzuski for the terms expiring September 30, 2023. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon? Councilmember Erickson Galt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, to the Local Development <coughs> Finance Authority, I'd like to nominate Ethan Baker is the alternate city council member. Support. Moved by the chair and supported by Councilmember Erickson Galt that we nominate Ethan Baker as the alternate city council member to the Local Development Finance Authority. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Councilmember Erickson Galt? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, that concludes my nominations for this evening. Now we move on to City Council nominations. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> to the Election Commission, I would like to nominate, renominate David Anderson and Harry Philo for the terms expiring January 31st, 31st 2021. 
Support. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton and supported by Council Member Hoderick that we nominate David Anderson and Harry Philo for the terms expiring January 31st, 2021 to the Election Commission. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon. Council Member Hoderick? Yes. Council Member Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Council Member Abraham? Yes. Council Member Brooks? Yes. Council Member Erickson Galt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Motion carries. To the Liquor Advisory Committee, I'd like to appoint David Gorsica and Kelly Jones for the term expiring January 31st, 2023. Support. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton and supported by Council Member Brooks that we nominate uh, Kelly Jones and David Gorsica to the Liquor Advisory Committee for the terms expiring January 31st, 2023. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Councilmember Erickson Galt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Motion carries. And finally, to the Traffic Committee, I'd like to renominate Richard Kilmer, Al Petrulis, and Peter Ziegenfelder to the term ex terms expiring January 31st, 2023. Support. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton and supported by Councilmember Abraham that we nominate to the Traffic Committee Richard Kilmer, Al Petrulis, and Peter Ziegenfelder to the, for the terms expiring January 31st, 2023. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon. Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Councilmember Erickson Galt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> we're, gonna be, we're done for the year, that one. <laughs> yeah, almost. But, uh, thank you to all those who have volunteered to serve, as I said before. Uh, that concludes uh, City Council nominations. We move on to I-3, which is a request for closed session. Council Member Erickson Gall? Uh, I will move item I3 as printed in the agenda. Support. Moved by Council Member Erickson Gall, supported by Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton, that we approve I3, which is a request for closed session, as printed in the agenda. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon. Council Member Abraham? Yes. Council Member Brooks? Yes. Council Member Erickson Gall? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Council Member Hoderick? Yes. Council Member Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, next up is I-4, City of Troy Redevelopment Ready Communities Baseline Report. This will be introduced by Drew Benson, our assistant to the city manager. Take it away, Drew. Mayor Baker, members of city council, uh, it's nice to be in front of you tonight. I am here to talk about the Redevelopment Ready Community Certification. Um, as you may recall, back in November of 2018, the city started this process um, to look at becoming a redevelopment ready community. This is a program offered by the Michigan Economic Development Corporation through the state. Um, and it's intended for, to incentivize communities to implement community development best practices, uh, redevelopment strategies, and having formal visions and processes in place to get where you're trying to go as a community. Their incentives include you know, grant opportunities, technical assistance, and the MEDC has said that they prioritize communities that are certified with this. And there's no direct cost to participate, although there can be costs associated with you know, implementing some of those best practices. So the process works uh, that city staff, usually um, sometimes it can be elected officials as well, um, go through their training program to learn what these best practices are and you complete a comprehensive self-assessment. And then you make, as a city council, the choice whether you would like to begin the process or not. In November of 2018, city council passed a resolution to become engaged with the program. So over the last year, city staff has been working with the MEDC to gather information to share what our current practices are and how those align with the MEDC's best practices. Through a, a year of work, there are a lot of communities in this process. We've gone back and forth, and we finally have a baseline report that um, was included in your agenda packet, and we'll be loosely going over tonight, but I do encourage you all to take a, take a look at, at, at where the city is right now. Um, so 
in a nutshell, where we are is the green boxes are ones where we meet or exceed the current best practices. The yellow boxes are ones that we are in the process of completing or partially aligned. And if there were any red box, you would see red boxes for areas that we're not aligned at all. Uh, I've got to give a lot of credit to city staff and people who have worked for the city before me. Uh, you know, Brent Savadon, Glenn Lapin, Mark Miller. Uh, the city is well aligned with many of them. 66% meet or exceed expectations, 34% we're in the process of. As you can see on the side, it breaks down to in six major categories or six best practice sections. And zoning regulations, we, we meet where we're supposed to be in terms of um, how we promote redevelopment sites. We're 50% there. And it, 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 it gets into a lot more detail in, your, in, in the baseline report itself. But suffice to say that the city is in a good position, but we still have room to grow. Um, some of the key things that uh, we were told that we need to look harder at doing are having more specific guides to development for applicants. So if you're interested in site plan approval or having a rezoning, what are those processes and having it in a single document? Um, public participation plans, so, you know, specifically codifying how the city chooses to get people involved. We do a lot of community engagement already, but it's not necessarily a one place. And so those are some of the details that we need to look at going forward. And so the next step in this process is for city council, city staff to receive this baseline report, review it, and make the determination whether you'd like to keep moving forward with this process. As stated before, this process, it, it's, there's no direct cost. But sometimes there can be costs associated with individual components of it. At this point, we don't necessarily expect that there will be, but those things can come up. Over the course of the next few years, should City Council determine that you'd like to continue with becoming a certified community, uh, we would bring anything that would require costs back for you to, for approval. Um, we don't have a set timeline in place, but we are looking to have this completed within the next few years. So if uh, if you all believe that this is a program worth continuing with, it's staff's recommendation that City Council approve the attached resolution authorizing staff to begin implementing um, the best practices that we may not have yet. And with that, I can answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Drew. Any questions for Drew? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton. I don't have a question, but just thank you for everyone involved that put this together, Drew, Mark, uh, Brent. Uh, I think this is a fantastic program. It's particularly the way it aligns with our a lot of council's vision when it comes to marketing the city, community engagement, and we've talked a lot about recruitment for boards and committees, and all those are covered under this program. So I am in full support of this, and just thank you, because I think this is a great thing for our community. I guess I do have one question. What other local communities to here are already certified? I, I know if any, or are we going to kind of... There, there are here. a number of communities around us who are engaged. I, mm. I, right off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you who is certified. Uh, I will say it's somewhat difficult to achieve full certification. Mm. In a community I worked with prior to the city, we had looked at this process as well. And, you know, in that scenario, it was much more daunting because it's, it, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of things. So it really is a credit to how much was done prior to even considering this program to you know, be as aligned as we are. Uh, but I, I, I couldn't tell you right offhand. Right, I think that's a, a good sign that we're gonna break new ground by doing this, and I'm excited and have my full support. Any other questions? Council Member Erickson Gull? Yes, um, other than the obviously wonderful goal of being able to, to say that we've, that we've achieved these uh, standards and goals. Um, your memo mentioned something about securing access to additional resources. What potential resources would the city of Troy be able to, to go after if we had the certification? So the Michigan Economic Development Corporation has a lot of different incentive programs that they offer, and Mark might be able to speak a little more specifically to what they are, but being an RRC certified community, is one of their stated requirements or, or at least preferences for communities who are applying for those um, you know, additional benefits. And the additional resources can come in the form of, let's say, in the process of creating a guide to development, we needed more help or uh, you know, something that's more complicated. We can get technical assistance and we get access to more educational resources for city staff should we need them 
for being engaged in this process and, you know, and then maintaining the certification. That is a significant portion of the certification is it's, it's not a one-off that you just get it. You, you have regular audits to make sure that you are still maintaining those best practices. And so those resources come in that form as well. So would you say that the, you mentioned that there might be some incidental costs. Would you say that the resources that we would be able to take advantage of would outweigh any incidental costs? I, I would say that yes. And primarily because we can complete most of the stated best practices with the staff and resources that we already have in place. Uh, when I say that there may be incidental costs, that, that's me being you know, careful to say, you know, when going through these processes, you, you never quite know. But there, I, I believe Mark would agree with me that we are confident that um, a lot of these things can be completed with the staff that we have. So there's not a, a large additional cost. One quick question. Council Member Brooks. Uh, yes, yeah, so you mentioned recertification. How long does this, is this, are you certified for? Is it annually that you have to recertify? I believe you have to check in with the state on an annual basis, just as kind of a touch point. They have RRC planners for each individual, uh, I believe they have 10 regions. So you kind of keep in contact with them on a regular basis. The, if the formal audits, I can't say for certain how often it is, but I know that you check in with them at least once a year and generally have regular contact with them. Uh, Councilmember Abraham. Thank you. The yellow and green checkboard, checkerboard, or maybe mostly green checkerboard assessment really shows how well our local government works. We, are, we have been well positioned and have um, gone through some choppy waters, and yet we still have provided um, a great uh, community for which businesses can come in and for residents to live in. And I see this certification as positioning ourselves for future success. We know that there are going to be headwinds coming at us, whether it's next year, two years, three years. Um, the economy is cyclical. And I see this certification and these, the access to those additional resources as only being a benefit. I see this as is being just as important as taking care of our roads. This is our internal government infrastructure that we're supplementing. And the fact that we can get there with little, if any, cost because our staff is, is well equipped to get the certification, I see no reason why we wouldn't want to proceed. So I will be supportive of it. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, uh, to on Council Member Brooks's point, I thought I recall remember reading in the agenda packet that certification lasts for three years, full serving. I mean, like you said, you have to do the annual updates. Am I correct, or did I did I misremember that, or I thought I somewhere that, there it said there's a you get certification for three years fully. That may be the case. I, I that that sounds right. Again, I, I I'm hesitant to say here. when I don't. And I can't say for certain off the top of my head, but I believe that is correct. Okay. Councilmember Hodrick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I saw a presentation about the redevelopment ready communities um, at a training. And as I sat in it, I thought, I think Troy is perfect to, to be in this list. And I thought I recalled one of the examples and the benefits, um, just brass tacks to a community, is if a business entity from another state is looking to come into Michigan and they're looking at the best place to maybe be bringing industry or office space or, or what or whatnot. When they make contact with the MEDC or at the state level, when you're certified, you now are one of the prime communities that's going to be offered up to these folks first to guide them to, to look to these communities. Is, it, that's a very simplistic um, explanation of one of the benefits to us, you know, in terms of economic development. Um, it, if I were to describe that, if a resident asked me, is that accurate? Yeah, I, th I do think that is a very an, an accurate, you know, simplistic but accurate way to describe it. Um, it, it the the MEDC, you know, they have their their pot of money to you know invest in different applications and opportunities that come up for private businesses and communities, and absolutely that is the a key part of this program is they feel better about investing you know the state's money 
in incentive programs in communities that meet the best practices that they want in place and having certification. So yes, I do think that makes sense. It gives us just another lever to press in terms of our economic development challenges here. Yeah. So thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions? I would just say, Drew, thank you for the presentation for the work you've been doing on this. I think it's, um, I think it is what Troy should be doing. Um, we, we talk about doing government best, and to me, this is something that makes us do government best. So I, I really, um, really am supportive of this. Uh, we have the resources to do it for the most part, even though you're being cautious. Mm -hmm. I understand, right? but we are. I think even with the, all the hard work that everybody's already doing, we're, we've got the, the staffing ability to, and the the resources, like I said. The other thing, you, you pointed them out specifically, but um, talking about development guidelines and community engagement, those are obviously two, <laughs> probably our two biggest issues, I think, facing the city right now. Um, so any help we can get with those would be great. But I mean, we, we are a council that cares very much about trying to, trying to work with all parties regarding the development and working on community engagement. So even I know we're just voting for next steps here, um, but if there's any th stuff that comes to you in the meantime, Please forward it on so we could, I mean, be looking at everything as soon as we can because I know our community's starved a little bit for some of those issues to be worked on. So thank you. And um, someone would like to move the resolution? Mayor Pro Tem? I will move I 4, City of Troy Redevelopment Ready Communities Baseline Report Resolution as printed. Support. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton, supported by Councilmember Hoderick, that we approve I 4, City of Troy Redevelopment Ready Communities Baseline Report as printed. Any further discussion? Uh, vote Ms. Dixon. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Councilmember Erickson Galt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Drew. Next up is I 5, bid waiver and budget amendment, fire panel upgrade for the County of Oakland, 52 4 District Court Building. I see Mr. Kurt Bovensee, Public Works Director, has come forward. Kurt. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, tonight before you is a request to waive the bid process and a budget amendment to upgrade the fire panel at the 52nd 4th District Court building, which the city does own. As you learned earlier, uh, that used to house the Recreation Department and then in um, 1996 was leased to Oakland County to house the 52nd 4th District Court after they did an addition. Um, part of this lease agreement requires that the city make the building um, standardized to all state and local building codes. The Oakland County Facilities Management Department um, assessed the exterior of the building for security um, improvements first, and then that was dealt with when you, if you were out there recently, you saw the barricades around the building. And then secondly was to address the interior of the building. Through that assessment, it was recognized that the doors leading out of the judges' chambers, which the judges did request those doors to remain locked, did not become to the unlocked position if a fire alarm was activated. So the county approached the city to upgrade those. Um, in order to upgrade those, we do have to upgrade the fire panel because the fire panel cannot accept any additional modules. Siemens manufactures the current fire alarm, which is very similar to other facilities in the city of Troy, um, which is why we're requesting to waive the bid process because it would cost considerably more money to upgrade the entire fire system if we did not go with Siemens. Um, along with this recommendation to upgrade the fire panel includes a audible alarm system throughout the court. This audible alarm system will allow the staff at the uh, district court to announce if there is an emergency outside a fire. So um, if there was any other emergency, they could they could produce an audible alarm that would um, announce what type of emergency there is. The county does recognize that they are making this request mid-budget year, and they also recognize that the reason why um, this is being requested is because of their operation. So in that, they suggested that they would split this cost with the city at a 50-50. So the re amount requested um, is just under $60,000, and then the county would be obligated to reimburse the city for just under $30,000. And with that, I'll answer any questions. Any questions for Kurt? Council Member Hoderick. I will move I-5 as printed. Support. 
Maybe, maybe I should say I-5, <laughs> bid waiver and budget amendment, fire panel upgrade for the County of Oakland, 52-4 district court building as printed. Support. Moved by Council Member Hoderick and supported by Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton that we approve I-5, bid waiver and budget amendment, fire panel upgrade for the County of Oakland, 52-4 district court building as printed. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon. Council Member Erickson Gall. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton. Yes. Council Member Hoderick. Yes. Council Member Pennington. Yes. Mayor Baker. Yes. Council Member Abraham. Yes. Council Member Brooks. Yes. Motion carries. Next up is I-6, Standard Purchasing Resolution Number 1, Award to Low Bidder, Contract 19-05, Willow Grove Sanitary Sewer, presented by Scott Finley, Deputy City Engineer. Deputy City Engineer. De Deputy City Engineer. Thanks. Didn't take Bill's job yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bill here. <laughs> so, oh, sorry, Bill. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mayor, City Council members. Uh, before you tonight's the Willow Grove Sanitary Sewer Extension Project, along with a little extension on Square Lake Road and a budget amendment. Uh, before I get to the specifics about the Willow Grove Project, I thought I'd give you a quick overview of our sanitary sewer extension program. Uh, after numerous failed sanitary sewer SAD attempts in the Charnwood Hills area back in 2003-2004. Council at that time asked staff to review policies, procedures, and ordinances uh, to see what could be done. Uh, the result of that review was a change to the ordinance that eliminated the requirement to connect to sanitary sewers when they became available. So you only had to connect when you needed the sewer. The other change was to fund the sewers via the benefit fee. If you um, SADs are an immediate lien on the property, as soon as council approves the item, the benefit fee is only due when the property connects to the sewers. So making those two changes to policies and procedures and ordinances, all of Charnwood Hills was sewered in 2006, 2008, through 2006 and 2008. Uh, we did other various projects in 2009, 2012. We also, with every road widening project, we've done sewer extensions where sewers were needed. And we've targeted, uh, well, targeted, we've waited for private development to construct sewers so that we could service other areas that were unserviced. So that's my quick recap. And that brings us right back to the, the item that's on the agenda tonight. It was uh, actually the Forest for development that's providing the sewer outlet for Willow Grove now. Um, Right from the outset, Willow Grove Sanitary Sewer Extension wasn't going to be a simple sanitary sewer extension. The existing road is entirely offset to the east side of the right-of-way. There's very little drainage out there. So we had our engineering consultant, Anderson Eckstein and Westrick, present us with several alternative and scenarios as how to address the situation. Uh, we decided that the best option would be to address all three with one project go in there, address the road alignment, extend the sewers, and provide storm drainage. Disturb the residents one time instead of coming back multiple times to address the individual items that needed to be addressed in the public right away. We'd also get a cost benefit to do it all at once instead of redoing work in subsequent years. Um, <clears throat> AEW also did the bid tab for us. Uh, reviewed the contractor's qualifications as making the recommendation to go with a low bidder, TR Piper's Act. Uh, city staff concurs with that recommendation, so it's also making the recommendation that we award to the low bidder. And along with uh, the award here tonight, we're also seeking a $200,000 budget amendment uh, to the Willow Grove project. Um, there is a, a pretty good area where we're going to relocate the sewers with a lot of Phragmites. While we took soil borings in the locations and our design is set for those soil borings, that's at a specific location. 10 feet away, the soils may change. So to give us a better comfort level, we're looking for a 20% contingency with this project as opposed to the standard 10. So with that, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer. Any questions for Mr. Fenley? <laughs> I know there were some questions I believe asked earlier. I know the city management's given us some answers, so that's a good sign. Someone like to move the re resolution? Councilmember Abraham. Thank you. 
I'll move standard purchasing resolution number one, award to low bidder, contract 19-05, Willow Grove Sanitary Sewer as printed. Support. Moved by Councilmember Abraham, supported by Councilmember Hoderick, that we approve I-6, standard purchasing resolution number one, award to low bidder, contract 19-05, Willow Grove Sanitary Sewer as printed. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Councilmember Erickson Galton? Yes. Motion carries. Next up is I-7, Standard Purchasing Resolution 4, Award State of Michigan My Deal Cooperative Purchasing Agreement and Budget Amendment, Police Fleet Vehicles. Kurt Bovenseep's coming back up, Public Works Director. <laughs> Good evening again. Um, Tonight before you is a request for a budget amendment and to um, a resolution to allow the city to purchase off the My Deal, My Deal Cooperative for two 2020 Ford Explorer Inceptors. Um, as I think most are aware, uh, one of the tools the police use in their uh, line of duty is the vehicle itself. This, these two instances, these total losses, these vehicles were used um, as a tool in the apprehension of apprehension of criminals. Because of these total losses, the city was able to recoup just under $37,000 from our insurance carrier. Um, however, because of the build time for vehicles is eight to nine months, um, we feel that it's necessary to replace these vehicles now. These two units that are being requested to purchase are what's considered ground units. That means that the unit has already been built or is in the assembly line now. Um, so in order to get these units back into our fleet to allow the police department to perform their jobs adequately, we're requesting this budget amendment and this resolution to purchase from the cooperative. Any questions for Kurt? Again, I know some were asked earlier and they were answered by city management, so thank you. Uh, some would like to move the item. Councilmember Hoderick? I will move I-7, Standard Purchasing Resolution 4, Award, State of Michigan, My Deal, Cooperative Purchasing Agreement and Budget, budget Amendment, Police Fleet Vehicles, as printed. Support. Moved by Councilmember Hoderick and supported by Councilmember Abraham that we approve I-7, Standard Purchasing Resolution 4, Award, State of Michigan, My Deal, Cooperative Purchasing Agreement and Budget Amendment, Police Fleet Vehicles, as printed. Any discussion? I vote Ms. Dixon. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Councilmember Erickson Galt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Motion carries. Next up on the agenda is I 8, singular wireless, ATT, master license agreement, small cells. I turn it over to the city attorney, Ms. Greg Uh Yes. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Um, this is, we had a study session that talked about the small cells. And uh, so this is the first master land use, or master um, license agreement that you have seen since that time. Um, I do want to indicate that Attorney Todd Wells is in the audience, and I do want to um, thank him for working with us within the framework of the new law. I think that we have the protections that um, can be afforded to the city with this license agreement. Um, I want to also indicate that this was based on a pr uh, prior agreement um, that we had with Extinet, um, and it is now within the confines of the, of the new law. Um, there is a reopener uh, in the event that the city is able to, the state legislation changes and the city is able to charge a fee that recoups our costs, but in the meantime, um, because of the competing need to have increased coverage um, for the increasing wireless demands, um, this is what we are recommending. I would indicate that for each uh, permit, there will be a right of way, or for each um, location, there will be a right of way permit that will be requested. So our engineering department will vet each, um, each of the <coughs> uh, locations that do come to us. And with that, I am happy to answer any questions. And if it's a technical question, I'm gonna defer to Mr. Wells. Any questions for the city attorney? I did have a quick question. Could you just talk a little bit about the protections? State law mandates that they can do this, correct? City, we don't have the power to, to stop these small cell towers from, or I shouldn't say towers, small cells from being installed. But could you speak a little bit about the protections that this master license agreement is allowing us to do as a city as best we can? 
Um, so one of the protections, for example, is that no trees um, shall be cut. Um, other, you know, again, we do um, have the ability to go through a right-of-way permit process, and again, that provides us with some added protections. Um, as far as, um, you know, um, uh, we're trying to locate, AT&T has been very good. They've been working with city management and, and city administration uh, in trying to make sure that um, it is um, as um, palatable as possible to our citizenry. That does not mean that there will not be new poles erected. The state law does allow for new poles to be put in place uh, to deal with, to address the increasing demands. So those are just some examples. Um, the reopener, of course, that's that's another um, item that has been negotiated. Thank you. Any other questions? I'd like to move the resolution. Council Member Erickson Gold. Uh, yes, I'll move uh, item I eight singular wireless AT and T master license agreement small cells as printed in the agenda. Support. Moved by Council Member Erickson Galt and supported by Council Member Hoderick that we approve I 8 singular wireless ATT master license agreement small cells as printed. Any discussion? Okay, the vote, Ms. Dixon. Council Member Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Council Member Abraham? Yes. Council Member Brooks? Yes. Council Member Erickson Galt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Council Member Hoderick? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you for coming, even though <coughs> no one asked any questions for you. <laughs> Thank you. Next up is I-9, City of Troy 2020 Strategy Development Process, as introduced by City Manager Mark Miller. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. We currently have a <coughs> special meeting scheduled on February 3rd for strategy development. However, after we scheduled that meeting, um, Council scheduled a meeting on February 4th, a joint meeting with the Planning Commission. We talked about this internally, and there was two reasons that suggested we move this meeting to the proposed date of February 13th at 5 o'clock at the community center was because, one, it would be a, the um, joint meeting is probably going to develop some ideas that we want to put into our strategies. And so it just seems logical to, to reschedule it to the February 13th date. It still gives us enough time in the budget process, and I think it will work out. Any questions for City Manager Miller? Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? My only question is why um, at 5 p.m. as opposed to 6 p.m.? Um, to offer more time to complete um, the tasks and get done earlier. I mean, if you want to change the time, it's up, up to you, obviously. I mean, I'd prefer 6, but if, if you think it, there was more value, I could probably get off work and make it happen. I guess see what I prefer 6, but I'm okay with 5 if that's where Council wants to go. But that's my... Councilmember Erickson Gall. Yeah, um, I, I could make the time work. I'm also concerned that setting it that early in the evening makes for less citizen engagement, and that's been a continuing problem with some of the initiatives that the council has looked at over the last few years. Is that we do absolutely want our citizens to show up and express their opinion, and I think a 5 p.m. time would make that even more challenging for the average person. So I would agree with Council Member Hamilton that 5 p.m. isn't ideal. I'll move to amend I-9 um, to change the time from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Somebody support that? Support. <laughs> Moved by the chair. Well, OK. Yeah, I guess, no, I don't need to do that. There's no resolution pending yet. <laughs> but that was fun. <laughs> Would For someone, the blooper reel. What's that? For the bloopers reel. Yeah, right. Mayor? <laughs> yes, Councilmember Hoderick. I will move I-9, City of Troy 2020 Strategy Development Process as printed. Or can I amend it now? You can just read it with the date and the time that you'd prefer. OK. As printed but changing the time from thir for Thursday, February 13, 2020, to 6 o'clock p.m. instead of 5 o'clock p.m. Support. Moved by Councilmember Hoderick and supported by Councilmember Abraham that we 
approve I-9 City of Troy 2020 strategy development process as printed except for a substitution. Uh, the meeting shall be at Thursday, February 13, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. Any uh, discussion? The vote was Dixon. Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Councilmember Erickson Gall? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you for uh, recognizing that it might be better to move it. So, uh, Next up on the agenda is I-10, bid waiver, professional services, police department testing services. Chief of Police Frank Nastasi and uh, Lieutenant Chris Stout will make the presentation. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. I brought up uh, Lieutenant Stout. He oversees our professional standards section. Um, reason I'm here is requesting a bid waiver for professional services for the police department testing using EMCO. It's a local um, business in Troy. Um, I'm also um, looking for approval for the contract and authorizing myself to conduct that with EMCO on behalf of the city. Um, they're one of the largest municipal testing companies in Michigan, EMCO. They've been in business since 1985. We've been using them for approximately 30 years for our new hire testing and also for promotional testing. They do a really good job. They're fair and impartial. Um, they customize their tests to our needs. We get really good feedback from people going through the process. And um, it also complies with Act 78 commission requirements for us for hiring and also the promotional process. Um, I think that's it. They, they do a really good job. And like I said, it's um, right now we are short some officers, so we're going to be um, testing for the new process for hiring them. And also um, our sergeant list is expired, and we're anticipating some movement. Um, this list would be good for two years, and that way there would be able to um, do those promotions as necessary. And I'm open to any questions that you may have. Any questions for Chief Nastasi or Lieutenant Staff? Uh, Council Member Hoderick. I had sent in this question, but I guess I'd, I'd like to just speak to it a little bit out loud. I, um, I know that our hiring practice here in Troy is rigorous, and um, we have both the challenge of making sure we fill, fill spots when they're open in a timely way, but making sure we've really vetted the officers and done background checks and whatnot. Um, I believe it was about five years ago, we worked to um, make sure that the timely filling could happen, but still ensuring that the background checks happen as thoroughly as possible. It does, and I know the answer from the written word, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to say, you know, to share that that continues, because I think background checks are important to our residents for all of us, for all employees everywhere, but especially our police department, and I know that they're very thorough, um, and I, I guess I just want to give you an opportunity to assure our residents that that's the case. Yes, that's correct. Uh, we work very hard and diligent to ensure we have the best persons hired onto the department. We do thorough backgrounds, um, very extensive. And then also we have the field training program that they have to do before they even go out onto their own, and then there's a probationary period. So we want to make sure the people have the skills, knowledge, and ability to do the work. Um, we did hire back about five years ago additional background investigators um, because what we were finding during the process, since it's so extensive doing the background, and there's so much competition. There's only so many applicants and so many departments, not only in Michigan, but all over the United States are short officers. So we were finding that they were being picked up by the other agencies while we're in the middle of the background check. So we expedited that, made sure we got those good candidates before other people stole them away from us and get them hired um, within the department. And I don't know if anything you want to speak on? No, it is an extremely thorough process. We, even officers from other departments, they, we do, Troy is obviously a place people want to come to work. So we hire officers from a lot of different departments. I myself, I actually came from Birmingham Police. He came from Hazel Park. So a lot of the, the officers here, so we go to those departments. As a matter of fact, Wednesday, I'm driving to Baltimore. We're hiring somebody who grew up in the city of Troy, 
Um, couldn't get a job in 2008, went out and got hired by Baltimore PD, but he wants to come back home because this is his home, this is where he wants to live. So I'm going out to meet with Baltimore PD to go through his personnel file, meet with his supervisors, and make sure he's a suitable candidate to come to the city of Troy. So we do take all the steps we can to ensure that the candidates that come here are the kind of people that we want working for the department. And then our field training process is very thorough. Again, we've had officers come from other departments who were, their department thought was a good officer, but we just didn't feel like they were suitable for us. They just didn't meet what we needed, and we put them through the process, and unfortunately they didn't make it. But and we, we'd rather have it that way. We want to make sure that all the steps that we put in place make sure they're a quality candidate to work here at the city of Troy. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilmember Pennington? It's not a question, it's just a comment. Uh, you know, I know police officers from other cities and, and uh, they're always jealous of, uh, mm -hmm. of Troy and our equipment. And it's, uh, I always tell them, uh, when you have the best, you, you equip the best. And, uh, and you guys are fine examples and just pass along to everyone in the department and you guys are, you know, that's why we do what we do for you. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member uh, Erickson Galt. Um, I will move I-10, uh, bid waiver, professional services, police department testing services as printed in the agenda. Support. Moved by Councilmember Erickson Galt, supported by Councilmember Hoderick, that we approve I-10, bid waiver, professional services, police department testing services as printed. Any further discussion? I'll just say that I think it's great that someone's trying to come back home to Troy to be a police officer here from Baltimore, and I would imagine our um, city and police department's a little different than Baltimore, so. <laughs> it, but you know what? That's great. It's, it's a great story. We love it when people come back, so. They're actually be our second Baltimore officer. Wow. Really? We have a current officer that moved here from Baltimore about 12 years ago. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. The vote, Ms. Dixon? Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Councilmember Erickson Gall? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Next on the agenda is I-11, Budget Amendment Classification and Compensation Study. Uh, introduced by City Manager Mark Miller. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in May of 2018, City Council awarded a contract to GovHR USA to do a pay and classification study of our um, exempt and classified employees. So that means no um, union type employees were included in this. And um, the you know this was 2018, and you know it was sort of a tumultuous, you know, kind of a tough year in time. The project. It's a kind of generational project. You only want to do it every 30 years. It's, it's very, it's very time-consuming, very detailed. And so um, we, we, we did not move forward in the last budget, the remaining $20,000 which are owed. So therefore, this is a budget amendment for $20,000 to complete the project. Um, and I will say it sh we, we should have included this in the budget. And that's why it wasn't there. It's not for any additional charges or anything. But the, the project is at 99% complete, and it's a, it will be released in, in the very near future. Thank you. Questions for City Manager Miller? Just to clarify, we actually approved this funding in the previous budget cycle, correct? But it correct. To be brought we over did not carry it over into this current budget year. Right. Okay. Councilmember Brooks? I move um, I. 11 budget amendment classification and compensation study as printed in the agenda support moved by uh, council member brooks and supported by mayor pro tem hamilton that we approve i-11 budget amendment classification and compensation study as printed any discussion the vote miss dixon council member brooks yes council member erickson galt yes mayor pro tem hamilton yes mayor uh, council member hoderick yes council member pennington yes mayor baker Yes. Councilmember Abraham. Yes. Motion carries. Councilmember Pennington. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I had asked uh, City Administration to put the vote for Pennington collision back on the agenda, and there was some miscommunication um, between um, me and, uh, and um, City Manager Miller, uh, and I would like to request waiving the rules and, and get the vote back on that, we, that I postponed um, two and a half months ago. Um, do we need to read that into the record? The that would be. Do you best. have it? Where I can. I, I do. Yeah. Would you like me to read it? Okay. 
Yes. Okay. So the, the resolution would state, resolve that Troy City Council hereby waives the rules of procedure rule 5A, regular meeting agendas, um, to add an item to the agenda. And the added item was the vote uh, to keep Pennington Collision as a vendor. Um, when it was first, uh, I didn't, uh, I'd forgotten about it actually, and I wanted to talk to the new council members before we voted on it. I'll support waiving the rules. So moved by Councilman Pennington, supported by the chair, that we waive the rules and allow an additional item on this agenda um, related to pending collision. Any discussion on the rule waiver? The vote, Ms. Dixon? Councilmember Erickson Galt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Councilmember Hodorek? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? I can vote on this? It's just to waive the rules. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. So the, that motion carries. Um, I, so I, I don't know what number this would be. Uh, End up being I-12. I-12. Um, do you have that resolution? I do. Okay. Um, would you like me to read it? Okay. Sure. Whereas the owner of Pennington Collision is also an elected city council member, and whereas section 612A of the Troy City Charter requires that in order for there to be any possible business relationship between the city and a business in which a city council member or his, her immediate family has a pecuniary interest, the other city council members must agree unanimously to pass a resolution making the business eligible to conduct business with the city of Troy. Now therefore be it resolved that Troy City Council hereby recuses council member Pennington from voting. Be it further resolved that Troy City Council declares that Pennington collision is eligible to conduct business with the City of Troy as allowed by the Troy City Charter, Section 612A. Can I, t I know I can't vote up on it. Can I discuss a little bit before, before we vote on it? Uh, Somebody has to move, our, can Councilman Pennington move no, it? No, no, no. Can't he, move it either. He cannot move it. Well, I'll move I-12 as read into the record. Support. Uh, moved by the Chair, supported by Councilmember Abraham. Um, to to approve I-12 regarding Pennington collision, collision is read into the record. Um, any discussion? Councilman Pennington. Yes, so um, just for the record, we, we uh, so I've been on city council for seven and a half years. Um, everyone that, when I first was asked to be on city council, everyone on council knew that I was doing business with the city on and off, but that, that is not something that new council members would know. So. Um, there, there was never uh, pressure for me to, you know, get extra business. It's just it's slow bid. It's it's not it's not the greatest work. It's slow bid. You have to, you know, it goes to four shops. Um, when you're when, if you're you know if, if you're so inclined, you you know you bid on it, and if if uh, if you get it, it's slow bid. So it's it's not the greatest work. It's more more like busy work. Um, but it is important. Uh, to me at certain times, at certain times, you know, you know it's, as any small business, you know, Mayor and I were talking, as a small businessman, when you're not busy, you'll you take whatever you can get. And when you're busy, you, you bid high, and you know, if you get it, great, if you don't, you don't. Um, but uh, it is important to me, and it, it, it has passed before, but you know, I just, I just wanted to get this vote past us. Discussion, anyone else? Councilmember Abraham. Thank you, Mayor. I really respect the fact that you reached out to, to everyone, Councilmember Pennington. I know this is, uh, it was, there weren't a lot of, this wasn't easy. The conversations may have been tough in some cases and um, perhaps the outcome not, not certain. And I know you're looking to get resolution tonight. I know this has been causing some anxiety and you're just looking to, to put it to bed one way or another. And I appreciate and respect your position. Um, certainly it's your prerogative to bring this forward and get that very clear direction. And just for our residents, I, I want you to be aware that Council Pennington and I have talked at least a couple times about this. And, and he and I have had very open, very friendly 
collegial discussion on this. And he understands my position and I understand his. And I, you know, what I'm saying tonight, it's not the first time that Councilman Pennington has heard this. My position is that the city of Troy has taken some hits. There's been aspersions cast, um, and that's because we had a very big breach of ethics. We had breaking of the law by the city manager, and it cast doubt on everyone, including council. It's, there's a reason why council has opted to have a third party investigate itself to make sure everything is above board. I hope, I pray that this third party will come back and say, there's, there's been no funny business on council. But until that happens, it makes me really uncomfortable to vote on this resolution because the optics of it, when our residents have had doubts, and, and I know this because I went through a very torturous election cycle, and this is one of the top topics of conversation. Councilman Pennington knows that this isn't an easy thing for me to do either because I've known him for quite a while. But I have to listen to what our residents are, are saying. And while I wish this vote were coming later, <laughs> after that investigation were complete and were all cleared of any doubts, because then I think it'd be a much more straightforward conversation and a much more straightforward vote. It's not so much straightforward tonight, and it's, it's, a, it's going to be difficult for me as well, just as it is for you. Councilmember Member uh, Same. <laughs> Um, Councilman Pennington and I have had some really good conversations and um, there's what I want to do as um, a fellow resident and neighbor in Troy of yours um, and respect for your business and what's right for that and then there's um, you know what I take an oath for in terms of serving the city um, and what I think the residents will be looking for is they watch us with um, a legitimate side eye, I believe, um, given, given what we've been through, and they're still catching up with where we are as we rebuild trust. Um, and so a vote on this in that regard takes me in a different direction, and it, it is very difficult. difficult. It is not personal. Um, and I, I want to say that publicly. I know we've had that conversation privately. Um, this is a position that I never wanted to be in, ever. Um, and one of the things when you're serving the public is you learn with your votes you don't make everybody happy and you cannot make everybody happy. But what we have to do, I think, as public servants in a time when trust is so fragile, is error on the side of being as pristine as we can be. And so all my voting, every action I'm taking, probably imperfectly, I'm trying to do to err on the side of our residents having confidence um, in me, but more importantly, our entire council, our city administration, and, and the people who work hard in our city staff every day to serve our residents. So, um, you know, this is difficult, and um, at, at it's not about you. It's just not. It's about a bigger picture for the city, and, um, and that's where I stand. Council Member Erickson Gall. I would just like to echo that um, this is not about you, Ed, and this is not about your business. Everything I've ever heard is that both you and your business are above reproach. Um, when I was campaigning last year, the, I've said this, Ted, before, the it, council member that most pe people were most likely to know and like and respect was council member Pennington. I had several people at the doors who told me how much they liked him and appreciated him and respected 
what he and his family have done with their business and in supporting the city of Troy. So I just wanted to to make it clear that, you know, that my vote on this has nothing to do specifically with you or your business. It's, and unfortunately, because this kind of came at me, um, I did not realize it was going to be on the agenda to, to vote on tonight. Um, if you read the charter, and, and my position is <coughs> I'm looking at the charter, and as I read it, and the charter, I will begin with saying it's not entirely clear in my opinion. The language is a little bit ambiguous. But as I read it, the default position is that members of city council should not be doing business with the city of Troy. That seems to be what the charter, the goal that the charter is trying to achieve. And that in, only in certain extraordinary circumstances should uh, a council member be uh, obtaining any kind of uh, pecuniary uh, monetary value from the city. And that's my reading of what the charter is saying. And, and so my vote tonight will be based on how I read the charter and absolutely nothing to do with Council Member Pennington or Pennington Collision has been a good corporate citizen for the city of Troy. Council Member Brooks? Yeah, no, and I, I would have to echo what everyone else has said up here. It's very difficult. Um, I've actually struggled a lot with this uh, vote because, um, you know, as a new member of council, you want to have good rapport with our fellow council members, and I really respect you. I really like you as an individual, um, and I really respect, like Ann, like Councilwoman uh, Aaron erickson Galt said, um, respect what your family has done for the city and your business, and as a small business owner, I completely empathize. Um, and you know, it's, it's very challenging because I don't want there to be any economic consequences for you personally or for your business. Um, but yes, we were elected. Um, I mean, the biggest issue this um, election was, you know, honesty and restoring trust in our elected officials. And after all the things that we've been through uh, with the city, you know, I think people are really looking to us to lead um, in that regard. And so, you know, all of our decisions moving forward have to be in that mindset as far as what's best for the residents and, you know, how this appears, um, you know, to the city and how, you know, that people feel that they can trust us and they can trust the decisions that we're making. Um, so it's a really tough, it's a really tough decision, but it's not personal at all. Um. Oh, <laughs> that was, uh, I've agreed on a lot of what everyone else has already said, um, and I, as someone who just went through a campaign on the community, I heard a lot of the same things and dealt with a lot of that. Uh, trust is huge, and transparency, and um, rebuilding that trust is important. Um, and I, I, I have a little different take on it, which may not be the most popular thing. I. I'm a little concerned that, you know, obviously you can count like I can count. You need unanimous consent to, to get it approved. And it doesn't sound like you have that this evening. Um, I, I voted for this resolution in the past, as long as it's been here. And I'm very, I'm a little bit troubled by the fact that it looks like we're saying something's wrong with Ed Pennington or Pennington Collision, and that's why we're not doing it, or that's why it can't get approved. And I don't believe that's the case. You know, I, I called for the investigation to this council. The issues that had come before us in the past couple of years, um, I don't know, let's, since we're here, Pennington Collision came out in the Lang Report as an issue, um, not related to this specific situation, obviously. Right. Um, but I, I actually don't think that um, I don't think the issue is with Pennington Collision and doing the city, the limited city business that it does. Um, I don't, in my heart. And um, I, I actually, I will vote in favor of the resolution tonight um, because I don't think that 
this is the issue that the citizens of Troy are concerned about. I understand the perception aspects of it, and I'm right there with you. I've talked for months about perception and trust and transparency. Um, and, but Pennington Collision was doing business with the city long before Ed Pennington was on council. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I, uh, it's, it's a minimal amount of business. It's, I, I don't know if, I, if there are numbers that were for public consumption or not, or I can't remember, but it's, it's not a large amount. Um, and I did talk to Councilman Pennington um, a couple days ago and said, you know, I understand the small business owner that every dollar does matter. Um, it, this is an odd one, Ed, <laughs> as you know. I mean, <laughs> I think that the, the, the expressions on all of our faces kind of explain it, but um, I guess I just want the community to know that, you know, when, I'm out camp when I was out campaigning for trust and transparency, um, it wasn't about Ed Pennington and, um, or Pennington collision. And uh, I don't want any action taken here tonight to do any damage, to any further damage to his business or his reputation, because I, I know that's not the intent of the other council members based on everything they've said. But uh, because of all that, I will support the resolution. I think that um, you've worked very hard to communicate with council members and worked with city staff. and. Um, perhaps it's the timing issue, and that can hurt you, but I, I just wanted to let you know. It and was going to be an odd vote regardless. It was going <laughs> to be an odd vote if it's now or if it's uh, six months from now after this investigation or, or whenever the investigation is. It, just, it's gonna, it was going to be an odd vote. And from, just from I had, I had sat down with, uh, with the new council members for an hour and a half each, and I you know, explained everything, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Council, Councilwoman Erickson Galt asked for a report on how much work I got from the city over the seven and a half years, and I didn't—I had no idea. Um, and we got it within uh, four or five weeks, and and uh, so the timeline would have been after the Lang report came out, and then you know moving, you know, that then that time frame that Kishnick was still around after the Lang report, and uh, the Lang report came out in uh, July of seven, 16. 16. And then we were in crisis mode for two months. I mean, we were scrambling like, uh, like you know, nobody's business. And uh, so really the, the area that you look at is the 2017 because that was a year that he was here the whole year. And um, we did $2,000 worth of business with the city, which is probably one car or two for the whole year. So it's not, it's not a, a lot of work, but I just don't think the vote would be different after the investigation than it would be now. It, 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 the numbers would be different, but just from my conversations with, uh, with David Hamilton, and, 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 and I just, I just want get, to get it passed, get, get it passed. Any further discussion? Vote, Ms. Dixon? Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? No. Councilmember Hoderick? No. Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? No. Councilmember Brooks? No. Councilmember Erickson Galton? No. Motion fails. Uh, next up is the consent agenda. Does anybody, would anybody like to pull an item on the consent agenda? Councilmember Abraham. I'll move all items on the consent agenda as printed. Support. Moved by Councilmember Abraham and supported by Councilmember Erickson Golf that we approve all items on the consent agenda as printed. Any discussion? The vote, Ms. Dixon. Councilmember Hoderick? Yes. Councilmember Pennington? Yes. Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Abraham? Yes. Councilmember Brooks? Yes. Councilmember Erickson Galt? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Yes. Motion carries. If you're here on the consent agenda item this evening, all have been approved. Uh, next on the agenda is memorandums and future council agenda items. K1, announcement of public hearings. January 27th, 2020, which is our next regular meeting, the City of Troy 2020 to 2024 Parks and Recreation Master Plan public hearing will take place. Um, please, council members, if you haven't already dug fully and dig in before that next meeting, it's in our online and um, residents as well. I know that. Uh, Parks and Rec's department and the DPW 
have uh, done a lot of community engagement, done a lot of work in other city staff as well, and um, put together a, the Parks and Recs Master Plan to approve moving forward. So that will be a public hearing at our next meeting. There are no memorandums that require uh, city council attention or consideration of the future point. So we move to L, public comment for items not on the agenda. We have one person signed up this evening. It's Marv Reinhardt. Sir, as you know, the rules are in the agenda packet is for public speaking at our meetings. You have three minutes. When you get the yellow light, you'll have one minute left. And then the red light, please okay. stop. Uh, I got a lot of phone calls telling me the police did an excellent job. I guess uh, Friday when the lights went out, they had four police cars and four men directing the traffic, and it went smoothly. I also got a call from a guy saying that he paid some type of... Uh, payment to the city, but he noticed back on the hill there was 50 deer. And I'm just saying, should come up with a solution before somebody gets killed. 50 deer is a lot. I'm just taking his word for it, okay? Now out in Ortonville, we just take him out with an air gun. No noise, no nothing. Okay? Don't need high-powered weapons. You're only 20 feet away from them. They're tame. Okay? Um, also, too, to answer the question of you said the other day, the last committee meeting, why people don't comment, part of the paperwork I gave said some. I kept the second page that said their goal is to harass the city government. Their goal is to deepen the sense of distrust of the city government. Their goal is to destroy what made Troy great for many years. Well, close your eyes. Troy was made basically in the 50s. Close your eyes. All the tax money, all the super brains in Troy make Troy look like today. Okay? I can't make it up. Warren's good. In fact, when I was overseas, we bombed cities down to nothing. They're vibrant. Why come to the city of Troy? 60 years of nothing. Okay? That's what's wrong with this city. Now, on 16 Mile, they're going to build a big hotel. Part of your scheme is to get money from the state. Why don't they do it like Detroit? So many percentage got to be new skilled tradesmen coming out of the school. They need to pound nails. They don't need to read books about it. And Troy would be the perfect shining city that would build a building like that. Illich just pays the fines, okay? You understand Illich is in this city too. So when you say you want the, the image of Troy, he's the image of Troy, okay? Because he's down in Detroit talking to these big people. So that's all I'm saying. And also, next time I'll come, I'll tell you the reason why Coolidge is the way it is and the rest of the roads look like they are. Remember, it's two roads, right? Nothing on it. That's another great plan Troy had, and I'll tell you why it's like that later. You guys have a good day. I'm having a fantastic time. Have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Reinhardt. Well, by the way, I got to pay. Whatever I pass to those people, I got copies over here. They're on the Mr. Mail. Reinhardt, your, yeah, your, your time is public spoke. Facebook pages with that on. Thank you. That concludes those that have signed up for public comment for items not on the agenda. Is there any city council or city administration response or reply? Seeing none, we'll move on to council referrals. There are none this evening, so we are at council comments. Anybody have council comments this evening? Councilmember Abraham. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for those who are watching, prior to this regular meeting, we had a, a special session. It was orientation um, for the entire council, and the focus of um, today's session was the library, Parks and Rec, um, and the Troy Historic Village. And I learned something new today, and I felt uh, that I, it was important enough to bring up as council comments. So as you know, our Parks and our, our Recreation Department does a lot with Troy Seniors, many programs um, to help and support them. One of the programs that is available is loaners um, of medical equipment, like crutches or canes, or wheelchairs while they may need it. And this is something, it is not a small expense. 
sometimes it's not always covered completely with insurance and I, I was moved that we had such a program and hopefully I'm doing it justice, um, Ms. Bo. So if you are a senior are in need of such equipment, um, please be aware of this program. The other part of it is if you have um, equipment that you could donate that is in good condition, they will accept it at the, the, the community center front desk. And if they're, you know, we have an excess of crutches. There are other organizations that we can donate, that they will donate those to so that they can go to those who, who truly need them. So I found that to be a fantastic program that I had no idea existed, and I wanted to make sure others did know that. Um, completely different topic. Uh, we, we had a weather event over the weekend with uh, all sorts of precipitation all sorts of flooding, and I want to thank uh, Mr. Bovenseep and the DT DPW staff for keeping our roads as safe and as clear as possible, as well as our police officers who uh, blocked off areas where there was flooding, assisted um, those who may have gotten their car stuck, not realizing how deep the water is. So once again, I thank DPW and our first responders for making sure that our citizens were safe are safe and continue to be safe and appreciate the extra hours. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton. Uh, on uh, February 1st at Troy High, there is the uh, Troy High Orchestra Gala concert, which I'll, I plan to attend that evening. I was a member of the Troy High Orchestra for four years, and their director, Alan McNair, was my teacher for seven years, both at Smith and at Troy mm -hmm. High. So I'm glad to attend. I, I thank you. Thank them for inviting me in inviting me and I encourage Troy residents to attend it as well. Councilmember Erickson Gall. Yes, um, I just wanted to comment on item P4A uh, on the agenda. It was a resolution passed by the Oakland County Board of Commissioners. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a non-binding resolution in which they're advocating for our state legislature to make it easier for uh, to, to achieve regional transit, uh, to improve our regional transit. Um, I know that that was an issue that came out in the campaign. It kind of came at me uh, sideways. I did not realize that transportation was an issue here in Troy. I, those of us who have the benefit and privilege of being able to drive and having reliable transportation often don't think about um, seniors or other vulnerable people who, who rely on public transportation. And um, Troy is doing what it can through our Medigo, um, and I guess it's not called Medigo anymore, right. RIDE, through our RIDE program. And uh, we're, we're really trying, but this is an issue that calls out for a comprehensive regional solution. <laughs> And I fully support the initiative of our Oakland County Commissioners to, to try to achieve a regional solution to transportation so that everyone has the ability to be mobile. It's so important. So I uh, just wanted to point that out and uh, to ask our citizens to continue advocating for um, a regional public transportation solution. Yeah, Councilor. Councilor Abraham. One, one last one. Um, next Monday is Martin Luther King Day, and as usual, there will be um, an event at, at Athens High School, a day of service in the morning, beginning at 8.30, and I think it runs until about 11.30, where we can uh, put Reverend King's words, actions, and, and fulfill them even today. So it's a great way to help out the community. Um, you I believe some of the things that we'll be doing are putting together uh, boxes for our servicemen overseas, uh, making blankets for those who are ill and in the hospital. Uh, I believe the Red Cross will be there. You can donate blood. So there, and if you if you have to go to work that day and can only participate in part of it, there will be a short program in the beginning. It is always profoundly moving and inspiring, and I really encourage you to, to go and attend. Anybody else? Council Member Pennington? Um, I'm gonna go last, do you, do you have anything or? Um, no, I do actually. 
Uh, well, it's a new year. We are uh, we had, we had a meeting last week um, that was called it's part of an orientation series. I'm still not thrilled with the title because I think it's more <laughs> than orientation. It sounds like we're all starting new, but I understand the concept. We've been working at a, you know a refocus on what our city departments do, the proper relationship between city management, city council members, uh, members of the public, members of the staff, and trying to turn that page and get to a fresh start where we, um, quite frankly, have had some failures over the past couple of years for various different reasons. So we are um, deeply into those. We're two out of three already at this point. Like you said earlier, we had one this, mor this morning, feels like this morning, uh, <laughs> earlier before this meeting. And um, they really are enjoyable. You know, I was on council for four years prior to becoming mayor. And um, I, maybe it's embarrassing to admit this, but you know I've learned new things since, and um, and I know you've been on longer, and Ed, you've been on longer. I'm sure you've learned a few things and heard things that are just even reminders of things that are important. Um, we are, a, you know, a council manager form of government, and it's supposed to be the most transparent, most effective way to reduce corruption and abuses of power in government. Um, we've seen otherwise a little bit, so we're getting back to the way it's supposed to be done, though, and. Um, Certainly city staff and um, this management team and all of your department heads and everybody down has worked really hard and continues to work really hard. And um, I said it in those meetings, but no one from the public attended any, even though you're invited. Uh, but we really do appreciate, or I, I really do appreciate, and I know everyone else does too, all the work you're doing and um, all the cylinders you're running at and managing the city and managing personalities, new personalities, everything that happens. Um, thank you for what you do, especially for what you've gone through in the past, and like I said, we're moving forward. Um, it's 2020. It's going to be likely a heated political year um, for a number of reasons. I don't need to call them out. I think we all know. Um, but, you know, your city government um, is focused on the issues that matter to <clears throat> you here in Troy, your streets, your sewers, um, your well, your schools, but we don't control your schools. But you know the, the local bread and butter issues that are important. So, although we will certainly each individually get wrapped up in our own political conversations and rhetoric over the next year, um, it's important, I think, for us to know that we're here not worrying about what's a conservative or liberal or Republican or Democrat issue, but recognize it was an important issue for the residents of Troy. And um, as I've said throughout the campaign and repeatedly, you know, community engagement is extremely important to me and um, we're working on strategies for those. We've got our upcoming strategy session. We just rescheduled it tonight where we'll put together our strategies for this next fiscal year. Um, Detroit Times ran an article this week or last week talking about you know uh, what's going on for 2020. It referenced the city manager's report from our last meeting um, where we are on the strategies. And um, we're, you know, we're about halfway through the year, so we, it's a, we don't run on the calendar year with our strategies, we run on the fiscal year. So we are looking for input as to you know, what things you want us to focus on in this upcoming uh, fiscal year, which would be 2020 into 2021, if you can believe that. So um, you know, all of our email addresses are on the city website. Um, our phone numbers are as well. Please reach out. Um, most of us have social media accounts where you can reach out. Uh, um, but we need to hear from you and we'd love to hear from you because you're the reason we're up here and doing what we do. And if we're not hearing what you're saying and if it's not getting communicated to us, it makes it hard for us to do our job. So um, I think it's gonna be a great year. We're already off and rolling with all these meetings and um, just wanna thank the residents of Troy for hanging in with us and watching us go. Councilman Pankton. Yeah, I just wanted to go last. Uh, I wanna start with uh, thanking Kurt Bovenseep also. We were on our way to church Sunday morning, and uh, it, with the roads in Troy were fine. I mean, my driveway was icy, but I pull out a 19 mile, and the road's great. So I'm going, you know, 40 miles an hour, and and I cross uh, DeQuinder into Macomb County, and it was a sheet of ice, and I was uh, very surprised and, and limped the rest of the way. And so I uh, want to thank you one last time for all the work that your crew does for uh, for the city. Um, uh, you know, we talked about this investigation coming up. I, I don't have a problem, you know, with it, with any type of investigation. I had a problem with spending spending the money on it, um, so I will still be a part of that, even though uh, uh, the choice is, uh, you know, continue to do work for the city, or uh, or staying on city council and taking grief from uh, 
from you know certain members uh, not council members but you know their their friends that uh, come up and attack us on a regular uh, somewhat regular basis and so it's in that vein that uh, um, this is going to be my last meeting I'm going to resign as of tonight uh, the end of the meeting today um, you know nothing personal it's just uh, the uh, the feeling is punitive um, uh, against me and Pennington collision like I said we've done work on and off for the city for for 50 years and uh, and when I took the position everyone knew that uh, that, that was the case so I, I don't have a, a problem with uh, with the vote per se because I, I you know with everything that we've been through I realize you know there's a cloud of suspicion that hangs over the four of us still and like I said before it's going to hang over us until we're out of City Council um, so for me that's tonight uh, I have a choice of uh, like tonight, I missed uh, dinner with uh, my year and a half year old grandson, and and to be here, and I don't have a problem with missing it. But they are moving. Uh, my son-in-law took a position in uh, a hospital in Flint, so they are not staying in Troy that much longer. And uh, Phyllis gets them three nights, three days a week, the way it is now. And I just, uh, you know, you weigh it, you know, stay on city council and take grief, or, or you know, spend time with my grandson. And and I turned 58 years old over the weekend, and. Uh, the choice for me is, is uh, pretty simple. Uh, I appreciate um, all the well-wishers. You know, appreciate everything I said tonight and everyone that supported me in Troy. It's uh, It's been a good run. I mean, seven and a half years really in a volunteer position is probably long enough. Um, you get to a point to where, you know, you get burned out. Uh, Ellen and I were talking the uh, the meeting after the election when we took 20 minutes to take pictures and Ellen said well you know it's time to pass it on to the young and I you know I said yeah you're probably right and I was watching TV with Phyllis a couple nights later and she watches this show below deck and it's on the Bravo channel and uh, and I was you know watching a little bit but on the show after came on and they had an advertisement and a guy their are a real men watch Bravo <laughs> and uh, and it was a during the show for the, was a women of Orange County or the housewife of, of Orange County. It's like if well, if real men are watching that, then you know the times have passed me by. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it's probably time for uh, time for council to pass me by. Also, I want to thank uh, Councilman Brooks and Councilman uh, Councilwoman Erickson Galt. Uh, you two will do well. I mean, you, fresh faces on council. We need that. Um, Ellen, we've spent a lot of time on council. It's been a good run. We, uh, well, you know, we did, didn't agree on everything, but we'd always come back around and, and get with each other. And then, uh, and uh, and Edna, I always thought that you were the most well-spoken, polite, on top of every issue council member I've ever seen. You did. It, it's, if anyone that w could run for a further office, I would. I would think you would be great in whatever you do. Uh, Mayor Baker, I I, uh, I wish you well. You will do you will do well as a mayor. Uh, I appreciate. Uh, uh, obviously, I wasn't behind you, but uh, hey, that's the way <laughs> things work out sometimes. And and I know you will do well for the city. Um, you all have beautiful families, and I appreciate uh, the friendship. Uh, don't give up the golf game. I think uh, you know <laughs> you could still you know, take some. I didn't pick up a stick until I was 25. I was 25 years old, and my dad came down with cancer. You know, I played softball three nights a week. He played golf, and I thought it was an old man's game. Well, now I'm an, I'm an old man playing golf still. <laughs> but uh, that's something we did together for three years. And like I said, I didn't, I didn't pick, I didn't know the game until I was 25. So don't give up on it. It's something you can play with your kids forever. But uh, um, there's so many people to thank in the city. Uh, Frank was up here earlier, Captain Nastasi. You and your team are phenomenal, and you know I cannot thank you all enough. Uh, you are the reason why you know this city is a gem. You and the, the staff here at the city, the schools, but it starts with with safety. Um, and I know many of your men, and I know you, and, and I thank you for everything you've done. Uh, the fire chief isn't here. I would like to thank him also. I mean, all the fire of all the volunteers do a fantastic job. The guys at DPW, appreciate you guys. Uh, Cindy, everything you've done for me, just helping us out, I appreciate it. Um, you know, I'll be fine, you know, I, I'll find something to do with my time. 
like I said, I coached football for 12 years. I was a pilot for four years, and uh, Phyllis and I worked with the youth. Well, she still works with the youth at church, but I worked with the youth at church for about five years before before I banged my head and took this job. But uh, like I said, it's been a good run. I, uh, I want to uh, appreciate everyone that, uh, that has wished me well, and, and, uh, and thank you. I know you want it to go last, but um, yeah, I, don't say <laughs> I don't know. Is there any other comments? I mean, it's. Um, no. I, I'll, I, uh, I'm surprised and not surprised, um, and I understand where you're coming from. Um, I certainly wish you and Phyllis well. I know that you've got a full life outside of Troy City Council, and it'll stay just as full. And um, like, I'm not. I'm not really sure what else to say at other than good luck and appreciate it. Um, you know, thank you for your service to the city of Troy through good times and bad. I think anybody who serves up here deserves that that thanks because it's not easy. Um, and uh, we, well, I'll probably think of something after the meeting's over. Don't worry. <laughs> but, it's all good. Yeah. Anybody else? No. Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton. I know earlier I didn't say anything, Ed, um, and I know we've not always, not always got along and, and have said things on a public forum that probably wish we didn't say, um, and so that's why I remained quiet earlier, but I, I, I agree with what everyone else said, that this was just a direction from the people of Troy and why I voted no, and I thank you for your seven years of service to the city, um, for reaching out to me after the election to speak, and, and I appreciate it. I wish you well. Thank you. Councilmember Abraham? I'm going to call for a recess. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, you, you came on council at a really tumultuous point in the city's history. And seven and a half years. Um, for those that have never been um, part of an elective, elected board, one year can feel like a dog year. So <laughs> you, you've, you would be a senior citizen dog if that were the case. <laughs> You'd serve 50 years. Um, you've seen a lot. You've done a lot. You really, you really have helped the community in many ways. And even though times have gotten really difficult up here, you've always taken the time once things have calmed down to level set, make sure everyone understood where you were coming from, um, had some heart to hearts. You've done a lot for the community and I hope you realize that the bumps in the road are not your legacy, and they don't have to be your legacy. And I'm, I hope you're hearing our words tonight and taking it to heart, and I hope Phyllis is taking it to heart because she's gone along this ride as well. Spouses, spouses always get it the worst because they have no ability to influence what goes on up here. So she's also served seven and a half dog years up, up here too, and not always easy um, to see the one you love um, be, be the focus of angry words. So Phyllis, if you're watching tonight, and I kind of hope you're not, I hope you have better things to do on a Monday night. Watch Bravo. Please. Yeah, she's watching Bravo. <laughs> um, we, we also appreciate you and what you've done, and thank you for, for letting Ed be here for seven and a half years' worth of Mondays, or at least half of those Mondays. It, it is very much appreciated. And thank you very much for the kind words. You had me tearing up. Mm. Councilmember Hodor? Oh, sorry. Yeah. We still can't call Councilmember Go ahead. <laughs> Councilman Pennington, I, I don't, I don't accept this. <laughs> I don't, don't suppose I have a say. Um, I was afraid that this might happen, and I understand your decision. 
and I support it. And if I'm being really candid and honest and authentic, I'm a little bit jealous. Um, <laughs> You started just a little bit before I did on council, and then we ran the next election, and it has been um, a road that's had highs and lows. Um, I appreciate a lot about you, and one of the great things that you have brought to the table in decision making is um, just a really concrete sense of what you think makes sense for how we should proceed. And I always understood where you were coming from. Um, sometimes when we disagreed, you were the one that would take the time to say, are we good and can we talk this through? And I always appreciated that. I also, most of all, appreciated your sense of humor, your quick wit, and the um, energy you would bring into a room, into a situation. Um, and I'm gonna miss that. And I really was um, looking forward to moving forward with this new council with you in the fold. I don't want you to resign. I understand why you are. But I guess I just want to be on record that I, I know I communicated this to you even when I was afraid you might, that I didn't want you to. And I sincerely feel that way. I think you've brought a lot of value. And I think we've learned a lot. Those, the four of us in particular, kind of, we've learned a lot. And you're, you need to know your legacy is that that wasn't a wasted learning. These weren't wasted, difficult times. We'll carry this with us. We won't let ourselves get on that slippery slope again. Um, and that's a tremendous contribution. You know, any entity, when it goes through a hard time, the real judgment needs to come and does it learn from it and go forward positively. And, you know, I want to commit to you that we will go forward positively. And I hope if you have input or thoughts or from, from your, you know, residential businessman position, you have friends here and we want to hear from you and we want to, we want to know your thoughts along the way. And we value them. And... Um, uh, there's been so much stuff that's happened, and this is just one more that I don't like, but it's what happens. I did actually think of one other thing I want to say. I, I, it was a little off guard. I shouldn't have gone first last time. But <laughs> thank goodness that the eloquent others have gone. But I, you know, sometimes in council meetings or um, in special budget study sessions or any kind of study session, you know, I, I'm a lawyer, and I know we've got you know lawyers and doctors and engineers and corporate communication specialists, and we're all we're all up here with these analytical thoughts, and we're thinking and trying to talk through something. And Ed's like, it's a bottle of water, guys. And <laughs> he has a knack for saying like it is, saying what it is, and that that is so valuable because I think sometimes we all get caught up in our own minds, and we don't really realize like well that it is just a bottle of water and that's what the residents care about you know and I will miss that very very much and it's come in public it's come in private it's it's always there you are um, you're you're really talented at seeing through a lot of the the garbage sometimes so I, I thank you for that and I also wanted to say you have great kids um, Kyle and Clarissa are wonderful wonderful human beings um, I've gotten to know them a little bit over the past four years plus. Um, you know, Kyle was here fairly recently, and you know, here we've just come off of an election, and you were supporting your longtime friend for mayor, and you had other friends, and you you're kind of you came to that meeting on November 11th and thought, oh, my friends lost, you know, and you were here, and yet you came with a smile, this big Ed Pennington smile, and warmth and friendliness that we knew was there, and we knew who you were, and. That's hard sometimes. I mean, and I, I really do appreciate that. And um, you've said, you know, hey, but like Ellen said, are we good? I mean, that, that's who you are. You're somebody who wants to get along with people. And that, that's a special quality and something we all need a lot more of right now. So um, I, I'm thankful that the last meeting in October 
pretty much your whole family was here for the proclamation for Pennington Collision. Um, it's nice to see your family here and supporting you. And when I think about that, I think you're going off to a beautiful place and you're very fortunate and they're very fortunate to have you back in your, their lives more regularly. And um, we do wish you well. And thank you very much for your service. Yeah, thanks. And friendship, Ed. Oh, Councilmember Brooks. That's okay. I didn't mean Always trying to get the last word. We're <laughs> competing up here tonight. Oh, Kyle's I didn't mean here. To go last hey, Kyle. Because, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to go last, obviously, because we don't. I don't know you as well as everybody else. But um, you know, I'm, I am really sad because I felt like we were just starting to like kind of make a good connection and building up that working relationship. And I, like I said, I really, really like you. And that was what was weighing on me a lot with this decision because I was worried that it would possibly come to this and I don't want you to resign I did not want you to resign you know and so it's it's hard you know I think you you'll really be missed um, you have a valuable perspective um, you represent a value a valuable constituency in our in our you know in our residents um, you have an important voice and it's kind of sad when you say you've been beaten up I'm sorry to hear that I mean, I personally um, do not hear a lot of bad things about you, um, so. Well, you, you'll find out. I mean, <laughs> you just started on council. You know, I know, but I'm just The saying, hard days I, are coming. I, <laughs> you're probably right. <laughs> but, but no, See but I. See how he calls it like it is? Yeah. <laughs> but, Sorry. But no, but I am, I am very sad. So, but I, I, I do understand, and I, I that, that's hard. You know, it's, it's hard for for me at least and um, so I do wish you well though I really do and you have a wonderful family as well I didn't mention your family your family's beautiful I mean I got to meet them take I didn't take any pictures with you guys but I mean I got to meet them and I, I didn't mention that but uh, I appreciate your comments and I wanted to mention one more thing is uh, Ellen went out of her way uh, for me a couple years ago about a year and a half ago we were struggling with uh, with a uh, Jeep Cherokee that had the whole front end wiped off and uh, and I had a guy that was off with an injury, and so my other guy, my my um, uh, a low low not low tech but a middle tech guy was struggling putting his car back together, and uh, Ellen had the same vehicle, and I go, oh my gosh, Ellen, think I can borrow your car one day? And and uh, Mike came by the shop, and I they they let me take apart their car so I could look at the routing of the hoses and the wiring. And so we could put it back together, and I, I forgot about that, and I appreciate that. It was at uh, most people, you know, that's something that takes a big person to, you know, lend it, lend you their car, and hey, take it apart a little bit. I don't mind, <laughs> but uh, I appreciate that, and I forgot to, I forgot to mention that. But, uh, but yeah, I didn't take this job as for a, as a, I knew it wasn't going to be a popularity contest. That's why I figured, hey, you know, my friends are gone, but I, I still get a year and a half to go. I didn't have a problem finishing my time out. But uh, you know, when I heard that it was, it was, it only takes one no vote, and there was going to be one no vote regardless. You know, with the with the charter issue, I said, uh, you know, we've talked about this before. This job, you lose sleep sometimes, and and it just to have it affect your health and lose sleep for a volunteer job, and then then I'm and I'm feel like I'm penalized. It's just, it, I just felt it was a good time, and uh, and uh, so that's it. Now let's move on. Let's finish this meeting. <laughs> Councilmember Erickson Gall always had a fair. She didn't. <laughs> I just want to make sure it's clear that I'm part of the I Like Ed Club. <laughs> and I am sorry that I won't have a chance to serve with you because I, I believe you're an honorable person. Your, your family has done wonderful things for Troy. And I'm disappointed I won't have a time to serve with you, although I do under, I completely understand your decision. So. All right, that concludes council comments this evening. Uh, any, we had already a little bit of discussion about one of the reports. Um, any other further discussion on the reports, Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton? Uh, since I brought the resolution forward last meeting, I thought I'd mention this. Uh, report P2A is about um, the efforts to increase voter participation in Troy. It was presented by Clerk Dixon and her team. Um, it just shows the incredible do job she's done throughout these years to engage voters in our city from registering students at their schools to having pop-up clerk offices at the library. I, I brought the resolution forward at the last meeting to just show that council is behind you and we want to we'll support any efforts you think will help 
engage more voters in our community. Thank you for presenting this, and thank you for everything you and your team do for our community. Thank you. Council Member Abraham? Just to, to piggyback off of Mayor Pro Tem Hamilton, the, uh, one of the key parts of that report is that election inspectors are very much needed in the city, and it is a position where you gain such great insight into the voting process, which is a, a core fundamental for democracy. <clears throat> There, you only need to be age 16 or above, and clearly a resident and citizen. Um, if, if you have any interest, please, please reach out to the clerk's office. This is going to be a big presidential election year, and I don't think we can have enough election inspectors working in November. Right. So please, if you've ever... If, if you haven't done it in a while, this would be the time to come back. If you've never done it for before, particularly if you're a high school student and are looking for one more thing to add to the college application, this is a fine thing to do. I'm looking at some high school students in the back. Um, it really is, you're serving your community, you're, ser you're serving your nation, and it's a long day, but it's extremely worthwhile. Thank you. Any other comments on the reports? I had a question um, at the risk of sounding seeming callous. Uh, with, a resignate, with a vacancy in council, I understand we only have 30 days to appoint somebody new. Do you need consensus or direction from us to start any process? Recognizing our meetings, we're we're very scheduled over the next month as it is. Um, yeah, we. Um, I don't. I think that everybody's going to want to proceed. This is catching all of us off guard, but yeah. um, you know, certainly we will um, pr uh, proceed expeditiously because there is a limited amount of time, um, and so um, we'd like to um, have some time to present something to council. So we'll do that for the. Yeah, present like via email. I mean, our next meeting is not for two weeks. <laughs> Are we? We will get to. We will. We will need to regroup and figure it out, and and uh, let council know what our recommendation is. Okay. And I apologize for bringing that up now. It's like oh no, no big deal. <laughs> body's not even buried yet, guys. <laughs> no, but I I just thought about our time crunch lately, our schedule. So. And, and mayor, I'm guessing that you will um, want to accept uh, applications as we've done in the past. I mean, that's what we've done in the past is we've accepted applications, and so we can resurrect yeah. uh, the application that that we have and and work through a process. I think our previous process, although not perfect works about as well as it could under the circumstances. I mean, anyway, but that's just my two cents. So. All right, thank you. Um, we do have a closed session this evening, so we will uh, adjourn from in there and recess for now.
but I don't know if she'll be female or I don't know if you know.